expected points, clean sheet odds, captaincy, and the best players to buy. This video has got all the information you need to know ahead of game week 28. All right, we're going to start off this video as I do with all the videos in the Ultimate Guide series, and that's by talking about the top players by position for expected points. Starting off then with the goalkeepers. The top goalkeeper for the double in Gaming 28 is Neto of Bournemouth. Off the back of a clean sheet against Burnley, I personally reckon he's probably going to keep at least one clean sheet against Sheffield United and Luton, both fixtures being at home. And not only that, he's really good for saves as well. So I think combination of that clean sheet odds and saves is why he's the number one keeper. Kaminsky, he's only just ahead of Raya, but he's the other starting double game week goalkeeper. Crystal Palace and Bournemouth both away for him. I'd say Bournemouth are definitely a stronger outfit defensively than Luton are. So yeah, the respective expected points there are pretty fair. Raya, Ariola, Kelleher, Onana, Edison, Leno, Krull is obviously the backup keeper for Luton. He probably won't start. Jose Sarr, who well, could well be injured for Wolves, so Dan Bentley might be taking his place. Yeah, those are the top keepers. Defenders up next then. You can see here it's a big list of defenders with a double game week, right? Particularly the Bournemouth ones. They all pretty much top the list. Draft Hand have basically selected the starting Bournemouth defenders to be top for expected points. Unfortunately, though, there are a few injuries amongst the Bournemouth defence at the moment. Senesi obviously left the pitch in game week 27 with an injury. I mean, managers that went early on him, that's so unlucky. I mean, a really smart transfer in given his upside for this week and obviously game week 28. Yeah, I mean, kept a clean sheet this week, just wasn't on the pitch for it. I'd say Zabani is definitely the second best Bournemouth defender. We've got Doty up there as well, obviously offering a lot of attacking upside for Luton. And then a mix of Arsenal defenders in there as well. Arsenal, of course, I still feel being the best defence in the league with some really good chance of attacking returns from their defenders as well. You can see there Ben White, Gabriel and Saliba still amongst the top, despite only having a single. Midfielders then, and well, we actually have Bukayo Saka as the leading midfielder. Salah could well be fit come game week 28, but do you really want to buy him ahead of a blank in game week 29? So... Yeah, I don't know. Wait to be see on, on Salah, but I'd say he would be up there if he's due to start, of course, for expected points. But Saka is currently the leader. He's only got a single game week, but he's still way ahead in terms of expected points. Brentford at home, I'd suggest Brentford not all that clever defensively. Provided he gets through the Sheffield United game okay, I'd suggest he can do really well against Brentford, particularly at the Emirates, right? Barkley and Tavernier, both up there, both double game week midfielders. I'd say probably the best players, best midfielders from their respective teams. Barkley, definitely the best Luton midfielder. Tavernier probably has the best pedigree, like in long term as an FEL asset. He's probably historically done all right for returns. And as you say, Cliver is probably my favourite of the Bournemouth midfield. He's only 4.6 million as well. So, you know, that's basically bench fodder price. And you could well bench him week on week if you did want to go for him. Christie's mixed in there. Odegaard, Phil Foden, Cole Palmer, Kai Havertz, interestingly up there for expected points. A really unfortunate benching for Pascal Gross in Game Week 27, but I do expect him to be back for Game Week 28, and he's always just a solid pick, isn't he? I certainly wouldn't be looking to get rid of him. Looking at the forwards, and it's actually a tie for the top forward for expected points. A tie between Solanke and Morris both sit on eight expected points. I'll talk about I'll talk about them in a second, so don't worry about that. Watkins and Haaland. Watkins actually taking the lead on Haaland for expected points. Probably argue he's got a better fixture. Spurs probably a little bit worse defensively than Liverpool. And actually, Watkins, he's probably in better form than Haaland right now. And he's got the fixture at home, whereas Man City have to travel to Anfield. That's a massive game for the league title, isn't it? Ogbené, Semenyo, who actually could be a decent shout. He scored a really nice goal in game week 27. Unal, Brown of Luton, Muniz, who quietly chipping away with some really good returns, although I'm not sure how quiet he is at the moment. A lot of managers are starting to hear about him now. And without a blank in game week 29... It could well be a decent option to bring in, regardless of the fact he doesn't have a double. And Julian Alvarez, he's always up there as one of the top forwards for Man City. I wanted to talk in a bit of detail about the captaincy this week because it's going to be quite a popular call, in my opinion, for managers to triple captain Dominic Solanke. But given he was an injury doubt, right, going into game week 27, and throughout the game, he looked like he was really struggling with that knee injury. He just doesn't look 100% fit. And his downturn in terms of form I'm pretty sure he picked up that injury in his fixture against Spurs. And that's when we sort of saw a downturn in his form, basically. You know, he is playing 
very much restricted by that injury at the moment. And I'd definitely, if you have him, I'd say he's the best captain. But would I want to use the triple captain chip on him, given that there's potential doubles later on in the season where you might want to use it? I'd probably have some second thoughts right now, given the form that Solanke's in. Morris, could you triple captain the Luton centre forward? I'm not sure. Obviously, they're both equal in terms of expected points. I'd probably give the edge to Solanke, though. I do feel like Bournemouth are better going forward still, and Solanke's probably the better player. Saka, Watkins, Haaland and Sinesi are up there as well, but you can't really triple captain a single game week player or captain them. I still think Solanke's the best captain, right? But I would be hesitant of using that triple captain chip on him this week. Given that there are going to be double game weeks later on in the season, right? And the fact he's playing with this injury, which is looks like it's really restricting him. I'd probably have second thoughts about triple captain in right now. All right, finally, the clean sheet odds then. Usually, I don't like to pick defenders with below 30%. And obviously, we've got some double game week teams. It's really hard to add up percentages. The percentage probability of single events occurring, I think, is actually a really difficult calculation. So what Draft Town have done is they've just taken both fixtures in isolation, basically. So Bournemouth have a 45% chance of a clean sheet against Sheffield United, and then a 38% chance of one against Luton. Arsenal... Just a flat 50% from their single. Crystal Palace on 40. West Ham on 38. Brighton on 36. Man United have a 36% chance again. Luton 22 and 13 in both their fixtures, which to me says 22% and 13%. Do you really want to back those chances of a Luton clean sheet if you're picking a Luton defender? That would be a question I definitely want to ask. Chelsea and Wolves both on 29 consider starting their defenders but i mean are chelsea realistically going to keep a clean sheet against newcastle probably not i think there are going to be few and far between clean sheets with bournemouth and arsenal probably the only teams i'd realistically back to keep one now as we get on to players to buy i have to talk about dominic Solanke, don't i in a bit more detail he's obviously going to be heavily considered to be a triple captain and i spoke about him when he go through the captaincy of course He's obviously nailed to start. I think he's going to play through the injury for Bournemouth. We'll take the penalties. We'll probably play 89 to 90 minutes most games. I mean, for me, he ticks all the boxes of a good FPL asset with that in mind. And he is, across the season, he's putting up some really good numbers. But since he picked up that knee injury, he's not been so great. And he just doesn't seem to be moving freely. And as I said before, his drop-off you know, in his form has coincided with when he picked up that injury. I think I'd still be transferring him in ahead of game week 28. I think the risk of not having him, given how popular he's going to be and how heavily captained he's going to be, it's going to be too great to go without him, in my opinion. But if you're thinking of triple captaining him, I would probably think twice because he's just not playing. He's not playing at his best at the moment with that injury. And I think triple captain chip can be best used later on. Now, I know he doesn't have a double game week in 28, right? But Douglas Louise is a fine transfer in, in my opinion, regardless of, you know, the fact he doesn't have a double because he plays in game week 29 and he ticks all the boxes for me of a really nice FPL asset. Starts nailed to start for Villa, right? Plays 90 minutes every game, takes their penalties, and he's still really good from open play, right? I think I incorrectly classed him for most of this season as a defensive midfielder, and he's He's been far from that. He has really turned into a goal-scoring midfielder and one of, you know, Aston Villa's most lucrative players. 26 starts, 9 goals, 5 assists, 0.41 expected returns per 90. Those numbers for that price are really, really strong. And you consider the fact he's got a fixture in game week 29, if you're not on your free hit, I'd definitely be looking to bring Douglas Louise into my team. I'd almost go as far to say that I'm in the mind of preferring Morris to Solanke. I don't know how outrageous of a thing that is to say particularly if you're not on your free hit right now right because he doubles in game week 28 and then he plays a fixture in game week 29 he ticks all the same boxes that, that Solanke does right now to start for Luton plays 90 minutes most games and he takes their penalties which I think it just gives the player a chance if they're on penalties like the two I've just spoken about Douglas Louise and Solanke right regardless of how they're getting on in a game they always have a chance of scoring because they take their team's penalties I'd also say a comment on Morris right He's not the best striker in the Premier League, of course, but he seems to give every Premier League defence he faces a handful, just with his physicality and size, and Luton are dangerous from set pieces, and he's a bit of a target from them. And again, at 5.1 million, right, you play him through 28 and 29, and you can bench him for the bad fixtures if you want. He's so cheap that, you know, you'd happily have him as first on your bench, and the returns ain't bad at all. 14 returns from 20 starts is nothing to be sniffed at. He's, he's gotten along really quite well, in my opinion, so... Yeah, 
I really like him as an option and I'd definitely be looking at getting him into my team. Another Luton player I'd have my eyes on is, is Ross Barkley. And across the, the midfielders that have a double, right, you've got some of the Bournemouth mids and obviously Ross Barkley and he plays alongside another player for Luton. I think Ross Barkley's probably the mess, best midfielder in the game with a double game week. And he doesn't blank in 29 either. So if you're not free hitting in game week 29, he's got Nottingham Forest. He could do all right in that fixture, right? I, I think he's a really sensible transfer in if you're, you're looking for a player to buy. I know Luton are poor defensively, don't get me wrong, but they don't have any issues scoring goals. And he's now to start, plays 90 minutes, obviously doesn't take the penalties, but he's going to be on the play, pitch for pretty much every minute the Luton play across the double. The one thing I would say is that I'd always considered Ross Barkley as a number 10 in, in years gone by, but he's playing a little bit deeper for Luton at the moment. And you can see there, his stats, they're not mind-blowing or groundbreaking at all. Seven returns from 18 starts, right? But yeah, I still, I really like him as an option just for these two weeks, right? And at 5 million, similar to what I said about Morris, right? You can keep him as your bench option if you don't fancy him in certain weeks. I mean, for 31 in 30, you could probably bench him and then just play him through 28 and 29. But yeah, I think he's a really sensible transfer in. Now, a player that is seeming to be really popular in FPL at the moment, but I don't think is actually that good. And it's Doty of Luton, right? Yes, I'll admit he's doing well from an attacking perspective. Eight assists, one goal in 22 starts is nothing to be sniffed at. But across that period, he's kept two clean sheets in 22 starts. So he's gotten a clean sheet every 11 games this season. And I've got to say, I'm not sure Luton keep a clean sheet in the next five game weeks. I, I just don't see it happening. They're just, they're just not good enough <laughs> to keep clean sheets. And that's kind of what you're banking, not necessarily banking on clean sheets with Doty with his attacking upside, but I just, I wouldn't want to pick a Luton defender who I would pretty much back to concede every week. And you're kind of, not saying you're completely trusting the Luton defence, but by owning one of their defenders, you're kind of putting a bit of faith in them and keeping a clean sheet, right? One little downside to him as well beyond that, Amari Bell went off in the game in game 27 against Aston Villa. He did finish the game Doty playing at left wing back, but for a big period of the game, he was playing left centre back and wasn't really getting forwards at all. And Luton have a lot of injuries across their defence at the moment. So I I definitely question the position that he's going to be started in in both games of the double because I think he could be getting some minutes at left centre back. Now, I think it goes without saying that Dom Solanke is probably the best Bournemouth player to pick, right? But Neto is, I think, by far and away my second favourite. But Bournemouth have got couple of nice fixtures in their double. I put three in their last two, but that's uh, that's for last week. Burnley, obviously, have just played Burnley and kept a clean sheet. Sheffield United and Luton in game week 28. I mean, conceivably could keep a clean sheet in those games, right? And not only is he decent for clean sheets, in my opinion, he's also really nice for saves. I mean, the guy makes 3.71 saves per 90. That means pretty much every time he lines up for Bournemouth, he gets saves bonus, at least in a game. And you think... Yes, he doesn't play in 29, so you're probably best bringing him in if you've got an option for 29 or you're planning to free hit. I mean, if you don't have a keeper for 29, don't bring in Neto. But game week 30, 31 and 32, you wouldn't be too worried about starting him if he had to. Everton, Crystal Palace and Luton is a reasonably decent fixture run. And when he's got the saves to back him up, I think he's a nice option. And yeah, not just for game week 28, but after game week 29, I think he's a decent goalkeeper shout. Oh, Senesi. I think he would have been a big, you know, one of the top targets for most FPL managers ahead of Game Week 27, right? He was the Bournemouth defender with the most attacking upside and probably the only one I'd actually pick. If you still fancy a Bournemouth defender, i just get Zabani at this point. Plays every game for 90 minutes and he'll obviously get clean sheet points when Bournemouth keep a clean sheet. But in reality, I wouldn't want to pick a defender relying solely on clean sheets with the way the season has played out. I think Senesi was the only one I'd really consider with the attacking upside that he had. Beyond that, I'm not sure I would recommend picking a Bournemouth defender now. But if you're still sold on the idea, the best guy to get in is definitely Zabani. All right, and that's the end of the video. All the expected points, clean sheet odds, bit of chat about captaincy and triple captaincy, and I imagine the top transfer targets that most players are eyeing up for the game week. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave me a like rating. Let me know in the comments what your plans are ahead of Game Week 28. I'd be interested to know that. And if you disagree with some of my thoughts on some of those players, I'd be interested to hear that too. Because, I mean, ultimately, FPL is all about different opinions, right? If we all had the same opinion on players and same views, all our teams would be the same and the game would be boring. Trust me, I'm not offended if you have a different different opinion to me. Just just be a bit polite with it if you if you disagree. I'd really appreciate that. 
You can subscribe to the Golden Gold channel. It should be just there. And I'll see you in my next video.